What's up, everybody? We have the new Blender 4.0 update. So we're going to dive in so that we can get through all these features in less than five minutes. No tools are an accessible way to expand Blender and customize tools without requiring Python. It allows you to use geometry node groups to create your own operators and your own modifiers. Simulation zones can now be baked individually in geometry nodes, and the simulation output node now has a new skip input as well. Just a reminder, my visual effects asset pack, which heavily relies on simulation nodes, is available on Blender Market now. We're currently working on a free update, and we just launched an essentials pack, which is a cheaper option. AGX View Transform introduces a better color handling system, especially in overexposed areas. This is an extremely exciting update. And of course, my favorite feature, which I have covered in previous videos, is light linking. A standard feature in many other software pipelines has finally made it to Blender. And with this feature, you can set light groups and then include exclude objects from lighting and shadows. Now all light sources have a UV available in the image texture node, but the point light and the spotlight have been changed to function as a double sided sphere light. And the sunlight offers consistent intensity irrespective of its angular diameter, and the area lights have also been received a corrected conversion factor, so overall you should see an improvement in lighting. And with the viewport compositor, it now supports movie distortion, sunbeams, keying, in paint, double edge mask. Blender even has a new render engine in 4.0, the Hydra Storm render engine, which is a real-time renderer that is part of the USD workflow. Now the principal BSDF node has a huge version 2 update. You can see it looks radically different with collapsible menus. This includes things like the new sheen, which uses a microfiber shading model. This will give you more realistic fabric materials and can be used for things like dust on materials. The normal map has also been improved for its interpolation of the strength input, meaning that it is less likely to break and give you those ugly black glitches. Multiple scattering GGX has also been improved and no longer has a noise or performance disadvantage. And overall, energy conservation has been improved, leading to brighter, more realistic material renderings. Path guiding now works on glossy surfaces, leading to less noise in your renders and thus faster renders and cycles. A new principal hair BSDF mode is included and it has a more realistic look. It's less noisy, gives a nicer focus reflections, but it might increase render times. The noise texture nodes have also been improved with new inputs for fractal Perlin noise and the Veron texture now supports fractal noise with new inputs as well. Now, if you're like me and use Rigify, you'll be excited to know that it's gotten a big update. It has redesigned interfaces for layer names, visibility panel toggle button layouts, and additional layer specifications. It's introduced a visual editor for modifying the layer visibility button layout. New built-in spline tentacle rig is also included based on the spline IK. Blender's been focusing a lot more on animation and we have a new asset shell for the pose library, making it easier than ever to use. They've replaced the legacy armature layers and bone groups with bone collections, a new system which has bone colors that can now be specified individually with both edit and pose mode variations. Benny Bones has a new method for vertex mapping to B-bone segments that considers rest posed curvature. You can now move NLA strips to be vertically reordered. The graph editor saw a huge update. We have improved drawing for locked F-curves, multi-editing for F-curve modifiers, but we have a ton of other operators as well, including match slope, blend to ease, blend offset, shear keys, scale average, graph editor handle selection, Butterworth smoothing, but I'm most excited about the push and pull, which works like an amplify setting and the time offset, which easily slides the graphs around. And we've seen significant improvements in the graph editor's performance, especially with dense key data. Great if you're doing things like motion capture. Volume deformation has improved on the armature modifier for rigging. The color picker is now capable of picking colors outside of blender windows on the window system. There's a new filter that I can't pronounce. It's that this word right here. Kind of a big change visually, the add modifier menu has been changed and now you can quickly search it as well. I'm a big fan of these new node panels that we can use to create collapsible sections within our node to create more organized nodes when they're complex. You see it in extensive use in the version two principal node. Library override has had various fixes and improvements. 3DS, USDS, FBX, and Collada have all seen large amounts of improvements. The OBJ add-on has actually been removed and importing and exporting OBJ format is now native to Blender. Within the sequencer, you can now adjust the speed of clips interactively by dragging retiming keys, and it also supports smoother transitions. A bunch of shortcuts have actually been changed in this update that you might want to check out especially if you do sculpting. I'm excited that they've added this incremental saving option, which we also have more statistic options within object mode. Selection for text objects has been improved. The default UI font has actually been changed this update. And as usual, there are hundreds of bug fixes, minor features, and improvements, which of course can be seen at the link in the description below. If you like what you see, go support Blender by joining the development fund. 